The great debate. New details about how President Biden and Donald Trump are preparing for this historic coming showdown. The earliest general election debate in modern history will be right here on CNN. After months of speculation, weeks of back and forth, and a whole lot of the equivalent of, like, I dare you, the first presidential debate of the 2024 general election is now set. Donald Trump literally responded to Joe Biden's proposal with, let's get ready to rumble, marking this will mark the third time that these men have faced off on a debate stage, also marking the earliest general election debate in modern history, June 27th, right here on CNN. This morning, there are new details on how Biden and Trump are already preparing and you're reporting on why the candidates agreed to face off so far, so far out from Election Day. For Biden, it's a chance to boost lagging poll numbers. For Trump, it's an opportunity to change the conversation from his criminal hush money trial and the others that he's about to face. On top of that, the timing gives both a chance to recover if they don't perform well. The, de the debate plans seemingly came together at lightning speed and now puts the candidates and the country on a collision course with history with a very intense start to summer ahead of us. CNN's Priscilla, Priscilla Alvarez is joining us now from the White House with more. Priscilla, what are you learning this morning from there about how they're now preparing? Well, Kate, they think he performed well in 2020, and this will allow them to bring that stark contrast that they're eager to shine a light on between him and former President Donald Trump directly to American living rooms. Kate? Priscilla, thank you so much. And John, I also really loved the deadpan Airbnb vacation reference that she just pulled off. Well, yeah, he can probably find a place to stay <laughs> at a reasonable price if he needs to during debate prep. That's what I was thinking right there. As for Donald... <laughs> it's a Thursday. It's all on Bryn. If she doesn't break out the crystal ball, well, you know it's what, over. Bryn? We don't know what you're doing, and we love you so much. Okay, coming up for us, the United States anchors a key humanitarian gateway to a beach in Gaza. The new reporting now on what happens next. And attorneys for Democratic Senator Bob Menendez laying out his defense in court. All those gold bars, they're putting that on his wife to be happily ever after personified. Let me explain. A North Dakota couple is celebrating more than seven decades of marriage. Mel and Vangie Benz, this is they, this is them, was, they tied the knot in 1951. He was 21. She was, why is that laughter? John's, la John, come over here. No, I'm just watching. She, she was 19 at the time. And here's what they told our affiliate about making it work for 73 years. Maybe it shouldn't be 60-40. I just really feel like I need a little bit more. Um, the pair credit their faith as the glue that has held them together over the decades, including when Mel was away serving in the Air Force. John, would you like to say something standing off camera staring at me? Sarah, would you like to weigh in? I, I would like to weigh in. It's beautiful. And Thank John's you. John's going off about something else, but he'll be in trouble with his wife at the end of this segment. Carrie, please weigh in. The, I was looking, they, it was the kiss. Mm -hmm. It was really sweet. So they sweet. were so sweet. Yes, they were. And it was, they lingered on it, is all I'm saying. Yeah. They oh lingered on the kiss. <laughs> Sarah, please take it. <laughs> I'm in two hours, court will resume in the bribery trial of Democratic Senator Bob Menendez. And today marks day two of opening statements in this. Yesterday, attorneys for Senator Menendez told the jury there was no bribery scheme and also said it was his wife who owned the gold bars. Seeing as Jason Carroll is live outside the courthouse for us this morning. Jason, where do things stand and what is going to happen today? Being tried separately, her trial starts in July. Kate? Wow. Let's see what happens today. Good to see you, Jason. Thanks for laying it out for us. John? All right, this morning. For us, wild new video showing the moments a semi-truck careens basically off a bridge, how the driver reacted to this terrifying situation and the moment that they were saved. And a major flood, there are major flood worries yet again in the south today, a rare highest risk of excessive rainfall issued for parts of Texas and Louisiana. The chancellor of the University of California, Irvine, says he is brokenhearted after police were called in to help and eventually detain at least a dozen pro-Palestinian protesters on campus. Hundreds of protesters surrounded one of the school's lecture halls and a small group barricaded themselves inside on Wednesday. The chancellor basically saying that changed everything. Here's the quote. After dash cam footage shows the wild and terrifying moment a semi truck nearly drives off a bridge in Kentucky, leaving the driver dangling over the Ohio River. Here is what they say happened. Pickup truck swerves into oncoming traffic, hits the semi, sending it careening off and nearly into the river below. And here is the moment. I honestly cannot imagine. The driver was eventually rescued by firefighters, sustained minor injuries, thankfully. The driver of the pickup 
was in court Wednesday on charges related to that crash. Chinese President Xi Jinping is rolling out the red carpet for Russian President Vladimir Putin at the start of a two-day state visit, literally himself. He's rolling it out himself. The trip is meant to strengthen ties between the two countries, and it comes, of course, as Russia continues its push into northeastern Ukraine, and both leaders face increasing pressure, understandably so, from the West. During one meeting, Xi Jinping said China is willing to always be Russia's, quote, good neighbor, friend, and partner of mutual trust. Sarah? All right. This morning... Minutes ago, Michael Cohen left for another round in the courthouse. And we're now T-minus 90 minutes away from a morning that has the makings of some very fiery fireworks in Donald Trump's criminal trial. What is going to happen today? Round two of Michael Cohen's cross-examination will be getting back underway. And sources tell CNN for the first time today, Donald Trump's lawyers will directly go after testimony from Cohen about Trump's alleged falsification of business records. Testimony, the prosecution says, directly implicates Donald Trump across 34 criminal charges. How does the defense challenge Cohen this time, and who will the jury believe? CNN's Bryn Gingras, she's outside the court for us with all of these details. Bryn, where are they going to go today? Yeah, Kate, so they need to sow some reasonable doubt in jurors' minds about what has said in the past, sometimes under oath and challenging what he has said, trying to, again, reiterate to jurors that he really just cannot be trusted. Uh the assassination of Slovakia's prime minister shot five times and then spent hours in emergency surgery. We have an update on his condition now and the ripple effects this is having across Europe. Hundreds of protesters are surrounding a building at UC Irvine, some barricading themselves inside. Why the school's chancellor says that changed everything and what they're doing about it now. Slovakian Prime Minister Robert Fico is now recovering in intensive care after an attempted assassination yesterday. The hospital says that he is stable but still in serious condition after a five-hour surgery. In the last hour, the Interior Minister revealed that the suspect has been charged with attempted murder and police now say disagreements with the government's actions played a role in the attack. I've seen as Fred Pleiken is outside the hospital. He has much more. Fred, what is the latest? Hi there, Kate. And one 